it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Christmas in July. Today's video is extra special because I'm hosting a big Christmas in July collaboration with several of my DIY YouTube friends. So not only am I posting a video with the theme of Christmas in July, so are my friends Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap, Whitney from Whiskey and Wit, Kristen from Kristen K, Jennifer from a little bit of Common Crazy, Yami at the Latina Next Door, as well as my brand new channel, The Cozy Christmas Cottage. So if you missed my big announcement that I posted yesterday, I will put that up in the iCard so you can go check that out too. I am starting a brand new channel. It is called The Cozy Christmas Cottage and it launches today. So not only are you getting a video here on my daily DIYer channel, you'll also get a bonus video over on my brand new Christmas channel. So once you're done watching today's tutorial, please check the description box. There will be extra links there with tons of holiday inspiration as well as a link to my brand new Christmas channel, The Cozy Christmas Cottage. Now in today's video, I have four different Christmas ornament DIYs for you. So this is definitely one of those DIYs you can do ahead of time, even in July. That way you are prepared when Christmas time rolls around. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's DIYs. First up are these adorable little farmhouses. My best advice to give you when making ornaments is to search your house for maybe scraps that you already have laying around. This is some underlayment that we had from a project and they did not get used. And so I'm taking my miter saw and just cutting them down. I measured mine to be six inches long, but the width of them can be any width because all houses are different, right? So mine are probably about three inches wide, but they're all completely different. I'm gonna be using a handsaw and miter box to cut down the roofs of these houses at an angle. The miter box will do this for you. It actually can cut at a 45 degree angle, as you can see here. So what I did is marked the center point of the width of each one of those rectangles, and that's gonna be where the peak of our roof is. So I did lay down a towel on top of my countertop and then put my miter box on top of this. This will protect your countertop from getting scratched. Now what I'm doing here is just finding the right placement for where I need to lay my rectangle. You can see that center mark is at the top of my saw there. And basically we're gonna cut the outside triangle off. And so what you do is you just saw into your material. This is really thin underlayment, so it doesn't take very long at all to cut through. And as you can see, then you just flip it over and find that center mark again and you're gonna cut off the opposite triangle. And this is what it'll look like after you cut those triangles off. You have a nice point at the end. And I went ahead and repeated this process for the rest of my ornaments. Now is a good time to drill a hole into the top of your roof because we are going to paint these, of course, and you wanna do this before you paint. So I have laid down a scrap piece of wood to protect my countertop. And I'm just using a smaller drill bit, one that is big enough that I can fit ribbon or string through the hole. Now I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper to sand everything down. Make sure to get those edges as well as where you drilled your hole. Now we finally get to paint. I'm gonna be using this acrylic paint in the color Traditional Burnt Umber to give my houses a stained wood look. So I'm using a foam paintbrush and giving everything just one coat on both sides and all of the edges. Thank you. 
Next, I wanted to make the houses white and just have the roofs that stained color. So what I'm doing here is taping off the roof line with some one inch painter's tape. It did take a little bit of time because I eyeballed this. If you wanna get really particular about it, you can measure so you know exactly how you'll have an even roof with your paint. I also made sure to kind of hold the ornaments up to the light and that way I could see if I had even lines for the roof as well. Then it was time to add the white chalk paint. I did still wanna see some of that brown paint coming through so it'd have more of a rustic look. So I did a light first coat and then came back in and added a second coat, sort of a little bit more sparse so you could still see some of the lighter coat through. And once it was all dry, I removed that painter's tape. And to dress them up just a little bit more, I had this garland from the Target Dollar Spot last year, but you can find it in the floral section at Hobby Lobby and Walmart even. And basically all I did was cut a length and made a circle. And then once I had tied the ends together so it would stay in a circle, I used my hot glue to keep it in place. And the only other thing I did was to add a loop of thin jute through the holes that we drilled earlier to allow the ornaments to hang from the Christmas tree. These are such a simple but beautiful rustic and farmhouse style ornament. I can't wait to see them displayed this holiday season. These beadboard ornaments are probably some of the most favorite that I have ever made. They turned out so cute and it's another one of those scrap items that I had laying around my workshop. I'm just using my miter saw again to cut some rectangles like I did in the first uh, ornament tutorial and made sure that I cut them down to where I still had two of those rows of beading showing. That was the really pretty part I wanted to save. Now, even though beadboard is already white, you can see they were still pretty beat up from being cut down. So I'm using my plain white chalk paint to give everything a couple coats, make sure they looked nice and crisp white. Now looking back, I wish I would have drilled holes in these before I painted, so definitely take that advice. However, if you forget and you paint and then drill holes, it's fine too. You can always go back and touch up paint, that'll save you a step. So I'm just drilling more holes in these into the top center. I love how simple and elegant these ornaments are, but they needed a little touch of something. So I decided to add a little decal to the bottom corner. This is a set that I have in my Etsy shop, which is at crossinmyheart.com. So if you're interested in those, I will have those available there. I'll link that down in the description box. And the great thing about this set is you can use them on so many different projects, not just on ornaments, but I've seen some really cute projects made with them. To apply them, I actually cut mine down. You don't have to keep them all in one. You can cut them up and use them individually. So I just used some scissors to do that, decided which words I wanted to use on mine. And I had a few extra even, so you can make nine total ornaments with this set of decals. And you just take something hard and rub on the front. You're gonna peel up that paper uh, sticky paper and then apply your decal onto your surface. Take something hard, rub over it before removing that transfer tape on the top or from the top and you're left with your beautiful decal on the front. It just adds that perfect extra little detail. Also, it's in that beautiful farmhouse font that we all love. 
I love all things Ray Dunn. I would love to hear down in the comments if you have a Ray Dunn collection or not. I love it and I have just a few pieces for every season and holiday. Now for the hangers of these ornaments. I'm using a thicker jute for this. It's a four ply. I get this at Walmart. It's really inexpensive and easy to use for these ornaments. You just pop them through one of the holes. You make a double knot at the top. And what I did is I actually cut the tails off of the knot and then pulled that knot down onto the front of the ornament. So you can actually see the knot and it's smooth at the top. However, you could also put the knot at the top and hang the knot from your tree branch. But I really liked the way that the knot hung in front of the beadboard. I love the look of these primitive, cute little ornaments against my flocked Christmas tree. Give this video a thumbs up if you also enjoy the look of flocked Christmas trees. These clay ornaments are actually sort of a nice alternative to the salt dough clay ornaments. Very, very simple. We're gonna be using this air dry clay. I got it from Walmart and it actually comes with quite a bit. So you could make tons and tons of ornaments just with one package of this, depending on how big you make your ornaments. I'm gonna be using some smaller mini size cookie cutters for this. Of course, you could do larger if you'd like. I have a paintbrush on hand as well as I didn't have a rolling pin. So if you can believe this or not, this is the end of a plunger from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I make crafts with a lot of the Dollar Tree plungers. So I had it on hand and it worked perfectly for this. So there's a tip for you. If you have like a larger dowel rod, that would work too if you don't have a rolling pin. And what I did is just rolled mine down pretty thin. I think I probably could have even gone more thin, maybe like an eighth of an inch thick before basically just cutting out like you would cookies with my cookie cutters. And I used a little uh, spatula to pry my ornaments up off the counter with and you basically just let them air dry. You do wanna add a hole to your ornaments while they're still wet. And I'm using the back end of my paintbrush to do this really, really quick and easy. And mine weren't quite dry after about an hour. So depending on the thickness of your clay is how long it's going to take to dry. I would say at least overnight. The outside is dry, but the inside was still, you could tell they weren't hardened all the way when I got done, but you know, just lay them out on maybe like a wire cookie sheet like you would cookies and then you'll kind of get um, both sides drying at the same time. If you don't have that, just flip them over maybe after several hours so you can dry both sides. I'm going to be hanging mine with this red and white baker's twine. It's from Hobby Lobby and it's a really nice quality uh, twine. It's a little bit thicker than some that you might get on Amazon. And again, I'm just feeding it through, tying a knot at the top, and then with the ends, instead of cutting them off, I tied them into little bows. These turned out so adorable. They look like little mini Christmas cookies. So I feel like if you have these in a kitchen during Christmas time, it would be so, so cute. Even something you could do with little ones. Now this next ornament is staying along the lines of that primitive theme. They're little spools, wooden spools, that you really could get creative with and make them match your own holiday theme or decor and colors. I'm using wooden spools from Hobby Lobby. So they came in the set of four and I found a couple different ribbons that I liked. These are kind of more on the traditional or farmhouse style Christmas and I just cut them down to size so they would wrap around the center of the spools and then hot glued the ribbon in place. I feel like you could even use jute for this or yarn and wrap it around and around. So lots of different ideas and inspiration you could really personalize these with. Now to make the hangers for our spools, I cut a long length of four ply jute. 
I folded it in half so I could create a loop at the bottom and then tied a knot. I left it long at the bottom so I would have a loop hanging still. So you can see here is a close up of that. I just really liked the look of this. It elongated the ornament a little bit and kind of gave it a little bit more detail. And what we're gonna do is we're going to bring those tails together, the loose ones, the other end, and feed those back up through the spool right up through the top. Once you get those through, you pull them all the way through and your knot is going to hold your spool in place. You're gonna tie another knot at the top, cut your extra tail length off, and you are finished with this. I hope that this tutorial has you in the holiday spirit now. And I don't want you to forget to go down into the description box, click on the playlist that will have even more holiday ideas and decor for you to check out from my DIY YouTube friends. We're all creating these beautiful Christmas in July themed decor ideas. And also, please don't forget to go over to my brand new channel, The Cozy Christmas Cottage. Check out the video over there and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.